welcome uh, Peter Platzer. Peter is the founder and CEO of Spiral Global, and he is going to give us uh, a presentation on space, advanced earth intelligence for sustainable growth. Peter, welcome. Uh, we look forward to your, to your thoughts uh, and your presentation, uh, and you guys are doing some tremendous work here with Spiral. So best of luck. Here we go. Thank you. Thanks so much, Glenn, and I'm glad to be here. Uh, let me share my, my screen and then uh, uh, the, the presentation on that screen um, uh, about uh, how I believe you know, everyone should be thinking about uh, the use of space in the, in the challenges that we find here on Earth uh, for ourselves. I think I want to start with uh, what I believe is really the generational challenge that we all face. Um, uh, and that comes to us in climate change. Um, uh, this is the risk matrix uh, created by the World Economic Forum in Davos, where you know, the leaders of the world rank both in impact and probability various risks that we face as humanity. And as you can see, things related to climate and weather, and I had not uh, circled biodiversity, which many might argue is at least also related to climate change, top the list in, in terms of being the highest probability times impact, the top right-hand quadrant of this chart. Um, and while I, I certainly can understand the huge fascination that many people have with leaving Earth uh, and going to Moon, Mars, and beyond, um, uh, at least for, for myself and I think many others, uh, the focus is still very much on the 8 billion people in 192 countries that are on Earth right now, uh, uh, including, including our children and, and their children's children. So if we, if we take that premise and it's like, okay, that's a really, really big risk that we face. Um, uh, you know, uh, it has come to the forefront of a lot of people's attention that space can be really, really instrumental in tackling uh, that massive challenge. Uh, you know, I, I, I share here, you know, two uh, um, uh, presentations, two papers, to publications from, uh, uh, I think, very well-known uh, sources that really have dug into here and looked at uh, beyond the hype and into the reality of space as it is presented today, recognizing that it can play a hugely important role as uh, we tackle those challenges. Because what we have seen over the last five, 10 years is an exponential explosion in the utilization of space. Um, uh, at the bottom right-hand side, uh, you see a chart created by, uh, by Bryce Technologies, where you see that um, uh, just about uh, uh, the majority of satellites in the last 20 years have been launched uh, just in the last five years. You see like this dramatic increase. And if you were to plot 2021, you know, that trend will of course continue um, uh, driven by, and we're gonna talk about it in a second, uh, commercial launches, right? On the top right-hand side, you see uh, the investment that has been driving this industry. Um, and if you believe that, um, uh, uh, investment is done by smart capital allocators, then you can see that there is definitely a large group of people that firmly believe that there's a tremendous amount of growth happening. In an industry that as of today, I mean, in an analysis that Forbes did uh, is already uh, worth some $4 trillion of market cap uh, with a participation of some 10,000 companies. So you have those really uh, a dramatic growth that is underpinning uh, this industry. And the, 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 the outcome of that growth is that the impact of space on the earth economy 
is going to be felt almost everywhere. Um, uh, uh, the, the, the research analyst for Morgan Stanley went so far to say that almost every industry on earth will be touched, if not disrupted by space. Because the underlying force, that exponential change that is happening really mirrors what has happened in the past when mainframe computers got replaced by personal computers. And certainly today, the statement that virtually every industry on earth will be touched by personal computers and the internet is entirely true. And there you had that same exponential trend, both from an investment side, from a company creation side, from a capabilities of the technology perspective that is currently underpinning a, a dramatic transformation, growth and disruption in the space industry, where um, a, a Bank of America forecasts that it will triple in size to over $1.4 trillion just within the next decade. Certainly a tremendous amount of growth uh, that is not just being uh, augmentative to what we do in terms of capabilities, but also disrupting on how we do certain things. Uh, and the comment that I made earlier about the private sector being an ever more important force is something that we have seen happening in particularly over those last five years. We now have uh, the private sector starting to outweigh the government sector in terms of space presence. And it certainly was the case historically that government and government activities dominated almost exclusively at the uh, activities in space. But over the last few years, companies like SpaceX, Planet, Spire Global really have started to uh, showcase the strength of the private sector, the innovation in the private sector, uh, and populated it uh, uh, in far greater numbers and with potentially far greater impact than the government alone would be doing. For example, what you see on the right-hand side is a, a, a private sector constellation from Spire Global, which wherever you sit right now, over the course of the next hour, you will be covered four times by one of those satellites from Spire Global. Now, how do those capabilities relate to the, the challenges that we face on the planet that we started out with, that top right-hand side um, uh, with regards to, to weather and climate and many others. And what I want to do over the next few minutes is show you just a few examples of how the capabilities from often private sector constellations that are deployed in such large number, capturing data from truly the ultimate vantage point, help us understand the planet Earth and allow us to drive to its a sustainable growth and a, a sustainable use of Earth resources. So what you see here is uh, the, the, the polar uh, 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 ice caps and the temperature in the polar region, which is driven by data collected from uh, the private sector constellation uh, from Spire and uh, the, the, the prediction capabilities of the company. And as you all know, uh, the, the, the polar region, the Arctic regions are of increasing importance uh, uh, for everything from global trade to understanding changes of our climate to the rise of, uh, of sea levels. And again, having the ability to collect that data uh, with a high temporal resolution, as it's called, meaning it just happens very often that every 15 minutes I had just mentioned is a key ingredient there. 
But it's not just that. You know, um, uh, we did a piece of work uh, to help understand locust infestation in Africa. Something that has, of course, massive implications for food supply um, uh, uh, at the very least, and probably a host of other elements there as well. And being able to have that global picture from a weather perspective, from a temperature perspective, was crucial to feed into the analytics platform uh, and drive an understanding of how and where this plague might travel in Africa and have an impact on the local population. But we don't necessarily have to go just to Africa. And um, more recently, uh, we did some work right here at home where uh, the, uh, the, the spawning of the brudic cicada was also driven by the temperature of the soil on the ground. And again, being able to have that, temp that, that measurement from space and the prediction layer that is fed by the data allowed a, a good sense of where and when that brood might uh, come up. If you then think of uh, the, uh, uh, the big news that were happening um, around the Suez Canal, right? Where again, the ability to collect data from space and see where every single ship is at any given point in time and what kind of wind might be happening in the Suez Canal or other areas that could create delays for that is another sign of how understanding the flow of resources across the planet from the ultimate vantage point space allows us to better manage that and maybe predict certain things or prevent certain things or understand at least uh, where they're coming from uh, and then learn from those impacts and make improvements. We will not be able to tackle uh, this generational challenge I talked about earlier, unless we are also able to change how we produce our energy. And renewable energy, of course, is an incredibly important element for that. It just has the difficulty of traditionally being not very predictable, which creates a huge problem for the electricity network operators, which rely on a very good knowledge of how much electricity will be fed into, into the network. Having the viewpoint from the ultimate vantage point space allows us to predict with incredible, incredible accuracy cloud coverage and solar iridians, which then in turn, of course, drives solar power production. And the more accurate those predictions are, the more accurate those renewable energy sources uh, can tell the network providers how much energy they will be delivering. And it's not just the solar iridians and the solar farms. You have the same thing with wind farms and offshore wind farms. Where again, the requirement is on having incredibly accurate weather prediction, not just on the ground, but 100 meters, uh, 200 meters up uh, from, from the ground, where it is not just over land in populated areas, but offshore or in very, very unpopulated areas. And if you then start to connect those renewable energy sources with things like um, high voltage DC lines, you can start to see that the combination of those energy producing assets and the data and knowledge that can come from space allows us to use those in an ever more efficient way and predicting what energy will be produced and have stable networks, allowing us to more and more wean ourselves off uh, 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 fossil fuels. And if we then stay on that ocean and think of some other crucial resources that we have and are trying 
to leverage, in particular fish, which is driving protein supply of up to 3 billion people, but is at threat of overfishing and depletion. You know, I wanna to point to an organization like Global Fishing Watch, which is using data from, for example, Spire to really understand uh, fishing activity and protect uh, the, 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 the global common good of fish supply in the oceans by pointing out where illegal fishing activities happen and help enforcement of protected areas to the benefit of all of us because enforcing those rules and regulations very often leads to better outcomes of future generations. And I can keep on going with those large generation challenges. Ocean pollution of plastic is yet another one where both private and public sector can leverage space to collect data that otherwise is not available. Deforestation of the rainforest is a very well understood one where without the monitoring capability from space, to share uh, what is happening and hold leaders and companies accountable is very, very difficult to protect our, um, uh, our forests, which produce you know, the incredibly important uh, function of both a carbon sink as well as an oxygen uh, generation. For us in California, you know, we are very, very familiar with wildfires. And again, given that it is a global phenomenon, space, and the analytics layer that can come together in using that data helps us deal with that impact that climate change has on humanity. And then when you understand um, uh, uh, wildfires, you immediately start to see how you can leverage a similar technology and understanding to drive food security and understanding the weather pattern and the soil composition will drive the supply of food and potentially create food shortages. I can keep on talking about all of those applications. And I just wanted to give you a glimpse and start to share how the proliferation of assets in space to the private sector, but also the mighty public sector is really giving us an unusual powerful tool in managing earth resources, allowing us to build up a, a, almost a digital twin that showcases in a, in a digital form where the resources of the planet are and how we can use them in a uh, sustainable way. I really want to leave you with this picture of space being something which is brought down to earth now in those last few years through the exponential change that is happening in the industry, allowing us to uh, understand, protect, and uh, live in a sustainable fashion on our planet so that also our children will get to enjoy it. And with that, I thank you for your time. Peter, thank you. F fascinating, fascinating presentation. Absolutely fascinating. I mean, you. The investment levels that you that you detailed, you know, I'm a I'm a big uh, hockey fan. That's some hockey stick. The last uh, the last 12 months with eight eight point seven billion dollars of investment. I think a lot of what you what what you, what you pointed out though, bringing it back back down here to planet Earth and using the technology and using the assets deployed deployed in space for the common good here on Earth is really Really remarkable, uh, and congratulations on, on on all your success and and all the common good that you're doing with Spire and, and your company. Uh, we really in, enjoyed your presentation. Thank you, thank you for for uh, kicking off today on our Space Day. It's a great it's a great table setting for us, and, and uh, we wish you continued uh, good fortune and success in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Glenn. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you.